intermittent fasting helps to repair your DNA and it even slows down cellular aging at the level of the caps on the end of your DNA, the telomeres that burn down normally during aging. Intermittent fasting slows that aging process down at the cellular level. And inflammation, uh, intermittent fasting, by the way, helps us uh, develop a more fortified immune system because part of the reboots at the stem cell level is to make new immune cells. So we've got fresh super soldiers produced coming right out of the oven uh, for to help uh, uh, our immune system. So these are ways that intermittent fasting has been shown to help our defenses. Doesn't mean that you have to do it all the time. It means that this is another technique we can use to kind of up our game uh, periodically when it comes to our health. Is it, is it something you do in your own life? You know, I, I, the answer is yes. And I've been doing this since medical school. I don't know if this, this is what's your experience, but man, when I was in medical school, I have to say it was difficult for me to have three square meals a day, as I say. Um, you know, I, I would sometimes miss breakfast. I would sometimes miss lunch. I would, you know, I would try not to miss dinner, but sometimes I wouldn't have a meal for, you know, because I was so crazy busy. And I think I naturally, um, over the course of a week, probably skip three meals a week. And, you know, that you, you don't you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to be. You don't have to be a robot yeah. to do in, you know, do intermittent fasting. Skipping a handful, uh, skipping, skipping a few meals a week actually is helpful for your body. Sounds like you were intermittent fasting by accident before it even became a thing. Uh, final two quick questions, if I can. Um, could you leave the listeners with some kind of top foods that you would? ideally have them focus on. Appreciate that actually it's very hard to distill everything down to that. Um, but also you wrote your book, we're, we're recording this end of January 2022. It came out from what I can tell March 2019, almost three years ago. If you were writing the book now, what new information would you put in it that you weren't able to put in three years ago? Let me start with that question first, because the answer is I'm actually writing my next book right now. Okay. <laughs> so I'm actually adding all and, and enhancing that information. So my book, my next book is really kind of a sequel Brilliant. to this first book. And it's, you know, so it's not on a completely different, it's not switching off the topic. It's like, what have we learned about the health defenses that take things to the next level? So I will um, kind of uh, create not a spoiler, but a teaser. And I will tell you that the next level of where you go with your health defenses is the metabolism. So not only can you actually improve all your uh, uh, health defenses, but our health defenses are inextricably wired to our metabolism and our metabolisms obviously wired to our ability to be able to control one of the most important organs in the body. And this is a bit of a surprise. Body fat is an organ. So while many people curse the amount of body fat that they actually have, the reality is back to the set point, we want to kind of use fat to our advantage. And so that's what my next book is about. Amazing. It's sort of more in the health defenses, more metabolism, taking it to the level of metabolism, and then taking it to actually managing fat finally for the right reasons. Now, let's talk about some foods that, that everybody um, should know about. I, I'm going to purposefully tell you, um, tell it to people through my own lens, because I want to tell people the foods that I actually enjoy. So I enjoy green tea. Okay, um, here's my Earl Grey, but I have got lots of tins of green tea. I enjoy coffee. So think about it. I got tea on one end and coffee in the other. Coffee, by the way, contains chlorogenic acid. Chlorogenic acid is a natural kind of insecticide that the coffee plant makes. And so, by the way, that's something we didn't get a chance to talk about is what research is really revealing about how we grow our plants. Turns out, that the nibbles that insects do on plants, on the leaves and stems, are perceived by the mother plant as a wound. So the response to wound healing with these little nibbles that insects make is that the plant pumps out more bioactives like chlorogenic acids. So the organic coffee bean actually has more chlorogenic acid than a conventionally grown one yeah. because the one that's conventionally grown has all these pesticides. Now you don't have as many nibbles. And so it's not only that you have less of the pesticides, less chemicals, but you've got more of the good stuff, which is a good thing. So coffee, I love, I love coffee, I love tea. Um, uh, 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 I like, you know, um, among leafy green vegetables, which we all know are good for us. Um, I like Swiss chard. 
Um, uh, I like some forms of kale, dinosaur kale. I, I, I like to cook too. Yeah, you know, dinosaur kale, most people don't realize that's kind of this, it's got this funny pattern that looks like dinosaur skin, which is why it's darker green. Um, that's the kind of kale that is used to make minestrone soup. So you can actually cook with it and it and you and you blend it into the background and you get this wonderful dietary fiber in it. Mushrooms, I love mushrooms, all kinds of mushrooms. You know, white button, the lowly white button mushroom packed with a soluble fiber called beta D glucan, which boosts your immunity, yeah. starves cancer. Most people um, who get button mushrooms eat the cap. The stem actually has got twice as much of the good stuff, so don't throw the stems away. Save those stems, um, uh, make it into a soup, uh, cut it up to a salad, stir fry it. There's all kinds of ways you can actually use the whole plant. Um, I like uh, dried mushrooms as well, like porcini mushrooms, uh, which you can buy in a specialty store or order it online amazing flavor for a stew or for uh, uh or risotto anything else you want to make or a pasta um i love mushrooms um spices and herbs i like all kinds of spices yeah. with herbs uh rosemary basil and uh, uh turmeric cinnamon uh all of those types of spices i love the flavors they make your food taste a lot better seafood um you know i do like salmon but oddly as I got into looking at food lower in a food chain that actually has great, healthy omega-3 fatty acids, polyunsaturated acids, I found that sardines are really delicious. These tin sardines, and by the way, I started this in medical school, so I'm, I'm kind of giving you a confession. I didn't have time to cook a good meal. And so if I was late night and I wanted to whip up something, I'd boil some pasta, like usually some whole grain pasta, not very much. Uh, and, I, and I would sit around looking at some really good olive oil, some tin sardines um, uh, and uh, a squeeze of lemon, and I would literally um, boil the pasta, put it into a, a put it into a pan with a little olive oil. I'd open up a tin of sardines and just with a fork cut it up, mix it up, put some fresh ground pepper, squeeze some lemon on it, and bam, had a Mediterranean meal. Yeah. Uh, so I actually do like seafood um, uh, uh, like that. I, I a, a odd confession. I actually really love squid ink. So when you have squid ink pasta or, or, you know, you go to Spain or Italy, yeah. they have these, uh, uh, squid ink actually cuts up the blood supply to cancer. It preserves your stem cells, so many different, um, uh, great ingredients. And I love a juicy pear and a peach in the summer. And it's nothing much more that I love than a yeah. juicy peach. Um, oh. but those are just some of the foods that I love. Well, well, thanks for sharing that. And of course, in your book, you know, you've detailed what the benefits of all these foods are, what they do for us, what they do for their various uh, health defense systems. Are there a couple of kind of facts about some specific foods that you think would be surprising for people that a lot of people may not be aware of? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, there are a lot, there's a lot of mythology about foods and, and some of it's wrong. And when I say myth, I'm referring to urban legends. So that's a bit of a teaser. Um, most people, most women have heard that soy should be avoided because it's dangerous. So eating soy can uh, increase your risk for breast cancer. That is a common uh, uh, thought, but it's completely false. It is an urban legend. Research actually shows that those women who are at highest risk, including women who have breast cancer, the more soy they eat, the lower their chances of death. And so that's an example of an eye-opening uh, fact that science brings to the table about soy. Uh, here's another one. Many people have heard that tomatoes should be avoided because they're a member of the nightshade family, which is poisonous, and that uh, tomatoes contain a deadly toxin called uh, lectins that should be avoided, and it causes inflammation in the body. Well, that's also completely wrong. There are thousands of lectins out there. Tomatoes happen to have some of the non-toxic ones. Um, and in fact, the studies of tomatoes have actually shown in more than 30,000 people that those men who eat just two to three servings of cooked tomatoes a week have a 30% lower risk of developing prostate cancer. And so again, two examples of common foods that are surrounded by urban modern mythology that science cuts through like a hot knife through butter in order to reveal what the true health benefits could be. 
If you enjoyed that clip, here's another powerful clip that I think you are really going to enjoy. Blood pressure comes down, joints seem to get better, bowel symptoms seem to get better. This is going to keep your eyesight. This is going to keep you from getting dementia, renal disease, peripheral vascular disease, and cancers. You are not your habits. You can do it.